what you're gonna do. You can't fight the future. Wrestling God. ProWrestlingRadio.com presents. Are you talking to me? Pro Wrestling Radio. Live. Online. You think The Rock actually cares? What is he doing here? Oh, it's true. I'm bringing everybody with me. Be awesome. That's hard time. The beat a man. Six. One. Can you feel it? I hate your ever. Oh, the damn fool. That's how I roll. You're six. Come get some. Because I've done all of that. The king is back on his throne. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. And we are live. This is Eric Argiulo and Luke Hawks for another edition of Pro Wrestling Radio. A whole lot to cover. Really excited to be here tonight. It looks like we already have a nice little crowd in the chat room, which is very, very cool to see. Luke, welcome back to the show. Happy belated Father's Day. What's up? Back at you, baby. Let's kick ass and take names today. Exactly. I, you know what? I'm kind of exhausted. I really don't feel like taking any names today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we can just kick ass. <laughs> I was out in 90-degree uh, heat trying to uh, turn my daughter's car seat around. You know, at one point, I just thought to myself, maybe I should just let her ride on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Old school. Uh, was that jackass out? Remember when they put the, ba- the baby seat on the roof? Oh, right, right. <laughs> drove off. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, uh, we're going to get into um, Father's Day a little bit in the show here. Later on, I want to ask Luke a little bit about that and just experiences he's having with his son in in professional wrestling. I'll talk a little bit about some of the experiences I had with my pop in uh, wrestling. But anyway, Luke, uh, it looks like the big news this week is your favorite wrestler, Rob Van Dam, is back he is he has signed a short term agreement with the WWE. He will be working a limited schedule, something like Chris Jericho will be working. And um, kind of interesting the the backstory of this. From from what I understand, he was under the impression that TNA were going to resign him, and then at one point TNA just stopped returning his phone calls. So without much options, he wound up negotiating with the WWE, put this deal together. I was surprised, quite frankly. What are your thoughts on the outset? Uh, I think I think it's pretty crazy. Um, it's, it is crazy that TNA didn't really resign him. Mm-hmm. But uh, him going back to WWE, I'm not sure if I agree with that, man. I, I think they got so many other guys that they can be pushing. I mean, unless he's there to put guys over and, and, and build new stars, uh, I think Rob Van Dam's over enough. You know, they don't need to bring a guy like that back in and, and push him to the moon. But that's the booking. Again, that's not me. So I don't know what – their plans are with him but if he's there to put over the fandangos and the Dolphs and those guys then you know so be it yeah you know um you're you know you and i we've talked to ecw so uh, i know you've watched a lot of rob van dam um what are your thoughts are you, you, are you a fan were you a fan uh where do you stand I, on van dam i was a, I, I like van dam back in the day he, he wasn't one of my favorites uh you know but but the guy's definitely talented for a while there, he did carry ECW. He was the guy that people were paying to come and see, and he was he was drawing the houses. So you got to give credit where credit's due. He's very talented. At this day and age, though, I, you know, I, I think he, I think of course he's past his prime. He's sure. put in some good time. Is he still that major draw? Uh, I would I would say not. But you know, then again, that that's just my opinion. There's a lot of people who probably still go nuts over him, just like the morons who still go nuts over Shane Douglas. <laughs> Is there anybody really going nuts over Shane Douglas these days? I mean, dude, you see these idiots, they get on these chat boards and these websites and these, you know, and they, they talk about him like he, you could look at his YouTube channel and if he puts a video up, you see, they talk about the guy like he's God. You know, they it's like they ignore every mistake this guy makes. Wow. Now, now those are names I'd like to take. I'm not lazy. I, I'm not too tired to take those names. Yeah, it's more, uh, I, I don't, I don't understand. It's like, uh, you know, people just are so willing to turn the other cheek because the guy was on TV. Yeah. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, um, the whole thing with Rob Van Dam, it's funny because, I, you know, I, I'm kind of mixed on it. Um, I'll tell you what, you know, when I worked in ECW as a uh, ring announcer back in the day, I was there, I think it was 96 through 98 off and on. And Rob was one of the coolest guys there, quite frankly. I mean, 
you know, out of all the guys there, he was probably the most welcoming. And I actually had um, a little bit of a friendship with him before uh, I started ring announcing. I was working the RF video tape tables, and he would come over for tapes. And I was a fan of his stuff in Japan, and, and, and we just started talking. And, I mean, he was just always a super, super cool dude. And- yeah, he's always been super cool. He's a, I mean, that, you can't take that away from him. He's a, he's a real chill, laid-back guy. You never really hear about him having any problems with anybody. I, I've never heard, you know, somebody go, oh, Rob Van Dam, he's a jerk. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, you hear that about some guys, and he's, you know, that's one thing. But just because you're a nice guy at the same time <laughs> doesn't mean, you know, you should be a top guy. Well, that's exactly it, you know. Um, I think he's, a, again, you know, nice guy. Um, he did my radio show right before he went to TNA, and uh, we, went, we went about a good hour. And I mean, couldn't have been a better guest. I mean, just always been a nice guy. But, yeah, you know. It, it, I almost feel bad saying this, but I think it's a it's a terrible move. I just, you know, it's like if you've watched Rob, if you, if you didn't watch TNA and you didn't watch Rob in TNA, I could see why you're excited because when he was in the WWE before that, he he was pretty exciting. But if anybody has watched Rob in TNA over the last three years at all, he's he's looked uninspired. He's looked old. He's looked slow. He's looked rather repetitive. He he hasn't changed up his, his game at all. And he just doesn't look like a guy. Um, he looks like he'd be about three steps behind the, the current generation of, of WWE guys. So it's funny, Luke, when I see on Twitter and Facebook all these people so excited to see Rob Van Dam come back. And the first question i got to ask him is, have you, have you watched any of his stuff in TNA? Because if you have, I can't imagine you'd be excited about it. Very much so. And, I mean, it's, it's not the case like a guy, you take a guy like Jericho, who, you know, I don't think he's lost a step at all. I think he goes out there, he pours his heart in every match still. I mean, look how much praise he had from his match with CM Punk from uh, the last pay-per-view. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I just think Jericho really cares about what he does. And, he, you know, there's a guy that doesn't need to be in WWE because he has so much other stuff going on. So you know he's not there to just get a paycheck. I think he's there because he genuinely loves the business. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, you're, you're 100% right. He... Um you know, he, he hasn't lost a step, but as a matter of fact, it's kind of weird with Jericho because I almost think that he he's looking his best during this run than he has in a long time, which is kind of weird because, you know, he's had better pushes and he's been younger and, and he's been healthier, but I, I think he's looked fantastic. But yeah, you know, the Van Damme thing, it's just so odd to me. And the other thing, too. It's like the uh, pink elephant in the room, so to speak, in that, you know, Rob's been very outspoken of, of his marijuana use. Um, I mean, the dude was on high times. He spent about 20 minutes on my radio show talking about the virtues uh, of marijuana. And, you know, WWE, they fine. They fine $2,500 um, for marijuana use. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to give here. It, is, I can't imagine Rob giving it up, uh, you know, in, in his 40s after, you know, all the things he's, he's said and campaigned about it. But, you know, at the same time, I don't know if it's because he's a part-time guy that maybe WWE won't test him or maybe they'll look the other way or, um, you know, I just, you know, I, I just kind of think this is going to end badly at some point. Uh, yeah, I do too. Um, I, I definitely think it's like, will they look the other way? Because it's one of those things where you know, like you said, you know he's not going to give it up at this point. He's been so outspoken about it. So, and with WWE and all, you know, with all their, uh, I wouldn't say problems, but issues they've had and how much, you know, the media attacks them for things like that, will if they go after Rob Van Dam, will they keep him straight laced? Will they, you know, if, if he does slip up, what will they do with him? Yeah. Uh, and I mean, on another note, they, you take a guy like Matt Stryker, who they just released today. I don't know if you heard, but that's like yes. breaking news. They released Matt Stryker. And I don't know how your feelings are about him, but I think Matt Stryker's talented as hell. Oh, you know? I don't know. We're, we're, we're going to disagree on this one. I think he was one of the worst announcers <laughs> that I ever heard. I mean, he, he wanted me to – I don't have a lot of hair left as it is, but he wanted me to pull, pull the hair out that I have left on my head, and I almost did. I mean, oh, God, Luke, he was so hard to take when he would do those three-man teams with, uh, with, with I think it was Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler. Really? You think that? I actually like him, I, I, and I like him as a host. When I watch him host some of the shows there, I enjoy his work as him hosting, like, uh, you know, some of the, uh, you know, internet shows and things like that. I, yeah. just, I thought he did a good job with that. And, you know, I, I, maybe not as an announcer, but uh, definitely as a host. I, I enjoyed him as a host. Hmm. That's interesting. That, that's, that's interesting. I, I, I wouldn't have pegged that. I, I wouldn't have pegged uh, Luke Hawks as a Matt Stryker fan. Yeah, and, I mean, I, my dealings with him, I, I always thought – 
that he was smart. He had a, he had some good knowledge on the business. Yeah. Just from me being around him and dealing with him when you know from from the Indies to the time I was up there, um, you know, there's there was no reason for, for for me to kiss up to him or anything, or sure. for him to kiss up to me. But I just when I heard him talk about certain things and give guys advice. He was one of the guys where I'd go, well, you know, he makes sense. I don't think he's pulling that out of his ass. I think he's, you know, telling the guys some good advice. Yeah, yeah. No, so, that, go ahead. I I'm re- sorry. I respect that. You know, I, I respect the guy who would tell a guy, hey, you know, you need to lose weight or, hey, you need to buff up or, hey, you need to work on your promos and take this, you know, but you do do a good job with this. Because, you know, there's so many guys in the business that are just going to kiss up or, or, or tell a guy what they want to hear or, or tell a kid, hey, man, you're awesome, and then – you know, just to get them off their back and kick them out the door, and then the kids thinking, "Hey, well, I did great, but why aren't they hiring me?" Where Matt, I think Matt would be the guy to say, "Hey, man, you really didn't do good at this." Yeah. You no, know, that that was pretty terrible. You need to work on that, and that's one thing I like about guys like that because too many people. Well, we've discussed this before. Eric, yeah. Too many people go, "Hey, good job," you know, and they might not even see your match, and then you yeah. think, you know. You, these guys aren't going to learn from issues like that. So, you know, I, I that's one thing I respect Matt Stryker on. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting. You know, you definitely can't take that uh can't take that away from him. Now, Rob Van Dam, um have you ever, you know, worked any shows with him or or, or shared any locker rooms with him? I Rob, but actually uh I got my one of my my movie debut when I did my, got my SAG call was with Rob Van Dam and Batista on wrong, wrong side of town and I fought Rob Van Dam and uh that it was a cheesy, terrible movie, but it was Rob Van Dam's big screen uh, debut where he was supposed to be the you know the lead actor and yeah. ends up being Batista on the cover because which we, Rob got really hot about because uh, the producers and um, the makers of I think it was Sony who made the film if I'm not mistaken I, or no maybe Lion I think it was Lions Geek okay. I don't remember but they thought Batista was the bigger star. And Rob Van Dam's the lead in this movie, so they put Batista all over everything. They put Batista on the cover as the main guy. So, uh, you know, and it was supposed to be Rob Van Dam's movie. This, the movie was specifically written by a friend of Rob Van Dam's, and it was written for Rob Van Dam. So, uh, you know, that was a little bit of an issue. But, you know, like I said, Rob, like you said before, Rob was cool as hell. So he was very easy to work with, cool. I had a fun time, you know, fighting with him. And, it, you know, it made me some money, and it also got me my SAG card, which, you know, Definitely helps me tremendously today. So my hat's off to him. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, I don't. I don't want to digress too much, but I was listening to an interview with uh, Terry Funk on uh, Steve Austin's podcast, and what Terry um, told Austin was, I think it was in the early '80s, he started getting involved in movies and doing stunts and having little parts specifically to get his SAG card so he could get insurance. And of course, you know, we all know Terry, and you know, we we we've seen his his body breaking down over the last you know two three decades. And he said that he hasn't had to pay um, a whole lot of money out of pocket for these operations simply because he had a SAG card, and that he would go back to California every so often just to keep his SAG credits up. So it's kind of interesting you bring up the SAG card. Yeah, it is. I mean, that, that's one thing. See, Terry was awesome at that, and I like seeing Terry in the movies. So uh, it, it's it's nice to see those transitions. Do I see Rob Van Dam again as a lead actor? No. Nah. You know, and, and the one thing I like about Van Dam is, which I miss, I do think Van Dam used to have some good promos, man. I love those Fonzie Van Dam yes. promos back in the day in ECW, mm-hmm. and I, I haven't seen that in a long time. So that, that'll be interesting to see what, what, what WWE does with that. Because if you remember, that was an issue before. Remember when they had the uh, first pay per view and Rob Van Dam? No, it the, I believe it was the second because Rob missed the first one, right? Out, out of injury? Uh, I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. He did miss the first one out of injury, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the second one, and he came out and he got to get on the mic and do all that stuff. And, yeah. uh, you know, he, he voiced his opinion about, you know, Rob Van Dam being able to talk and, you know, how. <laughs> how he was toned down, all that stuff, awarded down. So it, it would definitely be interesting to see the character that Rob Van Dam plays and, and the role he plays in WWE nowadays. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. You know, it's funny, too, and, um, and, and we'll move on, but it's funny, too, because um, from what I, I understand, he did his negotiations directly with Triple H, and, um, I mean, opinions change, and, you know, guys get older, and, and they mature, and, and heat settles down, but... I remember Rob did not like Triple H back in the day at all. And what's even right. funnier? Yeah, a bunch of issues. Yeah, and what's even funnier about that is I remember when Rob first came to the WWE, and I would run into him every once in a while. 
and he hated it there. I mean, he absolutely hated it there. Um, but you know, I mean, at the end of the day, they're they're paying his bills. But I mean, he used to to, to just bitch and complain about everything there, and um, it's just kind of funny seeing him back there after even on my radio show when he came on my radio show like i think it was about four years ago and he just you know wasn't wasn't happy with the way that things went down and you know i mean hey you know um you're 40 i think he's 41 you know he's 41 he's probably not going to have uh another run after this and uh you know make make your money and and pop in pop out and 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 uh have a nice life yeah so i mean uh like you said and in the triple h thing it, it is surprising because they did have a lot of issues. Remember when Rob hurt Triple H? Yes. He frog splash and landed on his throat and put him out. But, you know, there was a lot of issues. But, again, we weren't there. So right. we don't know really what was going on. We read what we read on the Internet. And I don't know what Rob told you directly. But, you know, I'm not personal friends with Rob. So, I, you know, I didn't get any inside scoops from him. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I haven't talked to the guy in years. So I don't really – I don't even remember. Yeah. So, I mean, who, who knows? And right. that, I mean, but you bring that up. I just recently heard something – of course, one of the internet buzzes going around that Triple H and Brian, Daniel Bryan got into it backstage after Daniel Bryan's injury from uh, Monday night. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, for those, for those out there that don't know the story, um, the story seems to be, and I'm, I'm always skeptical of these stories, Luke. You know, I always, I always think when these stories wind up uh, hitting the sheets and hitting the internet that there's maybe, I don't know, 25%, uh, you know, shoot and like 75% work. I think, you know, a lot of times with these stories that, um, you know, I think somebody from the WWE, the source that supposedly leaked this stuff, a lot of times works the sheets. And I think you and I have, have talked about that. But right. um, let me give a story and then uh, you can jump in. Uh, story is Daniel Bryan was wrestling Randy Orton. He was supposed to go over on him. Uh, would have been one of the biggest wins of his career. Um, and uh, he wound up getting injured uh, during the match. And I believe um, he had like a, a hard time um, standing up or he, I don't know, there was something going on. And the trainer found out. The trainer wanted him to stop the match, and he wanted to continue. And eventually, uh, you know, they stopped the match. And when he got into the locker room, that he and Triple H reportedly had a shouting match. That that Daniel Bryan, uh, you know, um, was upset that they took away his moment, and uh, you know, and that he he wanted to finish the match. And you know, Triple H, you know, had his opinions, and apparently, you know, cooler heads prevailed. Um, let me let me give you a, a quick thoughts on that, and then I want to hear what you have to say as somebody you know that does this for a living, you know. Uh, fairly often um you know for one thing and you and i um we've both met daniel bryan before i mean i've i've worked on on several shows with him you know talked to him several times i can't ever imagine him getting mad at anybody i can't ever imagine him yelling at anybody especially triple h i really can't over over a match um and i I don't know it just it sounds to me like a work story it sounds to me like like they planted the story and, you know, and, and it's no disrespect to the people that reported it because they got their sources and they're reporting what their sources say. But I don't know. I, I'm just a little skeptical of this one. Right. I, it, and it could be. It could be. And I really didn't even read the story. I just read the headlines. And sometimes I don't pay attention to much stuff like that because, uh, you know, I, I don't really get into the BS crap, and nor do I care. Yeah. But you're like a broadcaster said, now. You have to know all this stuff. Right. You're right. I guess I got to start paying more attention. Maybe – uh. Who knows? I have trouble reading and writing. I'm from New Orleans, so we'll we'll see. There you go. (laughs) But, I mean, who who knows? Like I said, who knows? Honestly, who cares? As long as Daniel Bryan gets what he deserves, I think the guy's super hot right now. We discussed this last week. They they could put a top title on that guy right now, and he could run and touch the stars. Yeah. The guy's over. He's hot. He's a great, great worker. He can put it. You can put him in there with anybody and have a good match. Example, you know, I, I love the Ryback Daniel Bryan match from a few weeks ago. Yeah, I thought it was good. just awesome to to put there, put him in there with a monster and make him look so believable and watch him chop the monster down. It it was great. So I yeah. mean, just kudos to uh, Daniel Bryan. Let's see. You know, I'd like to see the WWE title on him. Yeah. No. Oh, absolutely. Just you know. It's one of those things. I don't know if you've ever done it with, you know, with Wildcat or with XPW or anything or when you were with Extreme Rising. I mean, have you ever uh, – what's the word I want to say? Have you ever talked to somebody like on the internet, like one of the reporters or something like that, and you kind of gave them a story to further one of your angles? Like you were – like let's say you were working Stevie Richards 
And, you know, and you said, you know, you told this reporter, you're like, I, you know, I effing hate him. I, you know, I, I don't like him. He tried to pull this and that where all you were doing was, was working is I've done it when I was with CZW and we were booking angles. I mean, I've talked to guys every once in a while that wrote on the Internet and I would like leak, you know, I, I would be like the source, the leak source. But all I was doing was kind of, you know, getting, you know, getting the angle over. So I wonder if they're trying to do this because you have right now Triple H also playing that like heel character right now. So I wonder, you know, I, I don't know. It just seems very convenient that you'd have this guy that's kind of playing a tweener heel, um, you know, pulling the number one baby face right now, the company out of a match because of an injury. Of course. But I mean, uh <laughs> I guess ninety percent of the time, I'm I'm just telling the truth because I hate them assholes. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you do, you do. Uh, you're the best. I mean, you know, go go out with Luke Hawks for a couple of hours, and uh, you get more gossip out of him than uh, and and all it is is basically Luke saying that he wants to beat everybody up. Yeah, I, I get pissed off pretty easy. So uh, you know, it, it's just one of the things, man. With, with with wrestling, so many egos, so many politically correct moments, and you know, this guy's not getting something because, you know, he he's not friends with the right guy or this guy's getting a push because he is friends with the right guy. Yeah. Uh, and, I, I, you know, I, I'm one of those guys who I'm never at a loss for words, really. And I, I always say what I feel. I'm not just going to tell you what, what, what you want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, let's put you in uh, Daniel Bryan's shoes. And, you know, and you're having this match and. Uh, this win is supposed to further your angle where you're going to work SummerSlam in the main event against Cena. Obviously, you're probably going to make more money in that matchup than, than you've made, maybe other than a WrestleMania. And you get hurt, and somehow word gets to the back that you're hurt, and they want you to stop the match, and, and you want to keep going. How, how does this end for you when you get to the back and you see Triple H? Uh, I mean, I would speak what I feel, of course. You know, I, and again, most guys wouldn't. Most guys would cower down. I, I'm always going to speak what I feel. It's just I, I don't think I've ever been really in a position where I haven't. And I mean, there's always those cases where, you know, sometimes you just go, oh, I'll just bite my tongue because it ain't worth it today. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm always been one to defend myself yeah. and what I think's right. And hey, if I'm wrong, prove me wrong because I want to know that I'm wrong and I want to know why I'm wrong. Yeah. So. And, you know, if I'm wrong, I'll shake your hand and say, man, I'm wrong. Most guys don't. Most guys just get pissed off and, you know, they'll argue. Even though they're wrong, <laughs> they'll argue and argue and argue until they think uh, that their, you know, point, point is taken and they're eventually right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've told me stories when, uh, you know, you had your issues with, with Shane Douglas in Extreme Rising. And, you know, and you, and you told me that you know, there were times where you bit your tongue. There were plenty of times where you told him what was on your mind. Dude, yeah, I mean, it was cases like I, I would just be like, it's not worth it because I'm just going to knock this guy's teeth down his throat, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's purposely, like I, I told you the instance where, you know, he would purposely ignore me. He yeah. would purposely, not, not, and I say ignore, and by what I mean ignore, lock himself in rooms, you know, make sure to stay on the other side of the arena away from me because he was scared of me. Mm. And the, I, the last heated conversation we had Stevie Richards was the one who had to be there and calm everything down, and Stevie stopped me from kicking Shane's teeth down his throat. Well, let me ask you this about Shane Douglas. You know, I, I don't know why I've never asked you this. I, I might have when we were when you know when we were out, but you know, with, with, with the whole thing that you were, um, let, you know, you off. when were we out? Because I, I we were, we were at Chickies at, we at Chickies and Pete's uh, like like six months ago. No, that never happened. Oh, I, that happened. That happened. You had your fans coming down there and bothering us. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, um, so you know. You you had been talking you've been talking crap on Shane Douglas well before Extreme Rising ever came about and then um, you know you started working there you did that deal um, where where you kind of teased something I think on on the very first Extreme Rising show were there ever any plans for you guys to do a match Yeah there was uh, and honestly I, I shot him down I, I wasn't interested in working with Shane because I hated him that much uh, and, and he knew he couldn't get in the ring with me he yeah. knew he would you know he, he couldn't hold his own against a guy like me. And, you know, they wanted to eventually put us together, but I told them that, what are you going to get out of it? You know, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to stump a mud hole in this guy because he can't go. Yeah. I'm not going to sit there and slow myself down or limit myself because, this, you know, I'm not going to put the guy over. Yeah. You know, I'm not going out there and, and trying to make this guy look good. Um, somebody who I feel is not a company guy, he's always about himself. Yeah. He may play the company guy role, which he does well. He, he plays that role well. He'll make people think that, you know, 
he's Mr. You know, company guy, Mr. I'm going to do everything right. Mr. I believe in what's right. We're going to not screw any guys over. We're not going to do this. We're going to, you know, we're going to drive this force all the way till it can't be driven no more. And in and, and reality, you get in the back and the guy's like, uh, yeah, I don't really know what's going on. Oh, this guy don't got it. Oh, this guy books me. So let me book this guy on these shows only because this guy books me. Not because he's talented, because the guy has no talent. But I want to book this guy because he takes care of me and he pays me well. Yeah. So, you know, when you put some crap indie guys on the show for top stars only because they're giving you a payday. I mean, what does that say about you? I don't book like, like when, when, when I book shows, I don't book my friends. Yeah. I don't. I book the guys who work for it, the guys who I think are gonna. I'm gonna get the best product out of. I'm not saying some of the guys aren't my friends, but there's a ton of guys that haven't been on any of my shows. Guys like Homicide, Papa Don, you know, uh, yeah. Julio De Niro, some of my closest friends in wrestling that you know that I, I talk to on a regular. I mean, Eric, if that was the case, I'd be flying you down to be do you know to do commentary down here. Yeah. It's just. That's not in the budget, and it's not you know. I I would not rather have anybody other than you on my show doing commentary. Well, I appreciate that, and I, it's it's really, it's really kind of you. And like you know, it's one of those things too, um, where I mean, even me, like 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 for somebody for for a friend of mine, you know, that that would contact me, like if you contacted me to do commentary, um, I would try and make it work, you know, no matter what, even even if I had to take a loss to to come down and do it. But it's like one of those things where I, you know, I would tell you, I'd be like, you know what, you're better off just finding your own guy that's local and, and, and working with them. I could help them. I mean, it's just, you know, you just you just treat your friends differently. I think in this business, right, right, you're you're right. It's just you should, but most times, you know, as you know, and I know, that's not the case. Yeah, yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth. Um, so, so, okay. Um, you know, we, we talked a little Shane Douglas there, um, and I know we digressed a little bit. So I don't know if you saw it. I'm sure you've heard about it by now. But um, Mark Henry, uh, they did a deal on Monday night where Mark Henry teased his retirement. And uh, he did this deal where he attacked Cena. And I thought it was great. And it was really well received by everything that I read um, in social media. Um, I don't know if you saw it or, or what your thoughts are on it, even just from what you heard. No, I, I missed uh, I missed Raw Monday, actually. Um, but I did hear about it. It was a, it was a very hot topic. I heard it was a great promo. I yeah, heard. yeah, and it was really it, it was a surprise. You know, it's 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 really a surprise is what it was because nobody really expected it, and they really hit it well. Yeah, and I, I know Mark personally. I've known Mark a long time. Uh, I I like Mark. I like Mark's work. I think he's a good big man. Uh, you know, some people might. I think the guy is believable. I think he's definitely believable as his character. And uh, but but I've been talking to Mark for a long time, and I know he's been talking about retiring. He has been talking about retiring for. I mean, when he was world champ, that was the last time we really hung out. When he was world champ, he was down here. We went out one night, you know, and uh, we hung out all night long. And that was mostly what he talked about all night. Yeah, in another year or so, I'm gonna be retiring. I can't wait to go spend more time with my kids. I'm gonna move down to. Uh, I think somewhere in the Keys, he was saying he wanted to move and, you know, just enjoy relaxing for the rest of his life because he's been on the road for how many years now? Yeah, a long time. I mean, my gosh, wasn't he in the Attitude Era? I mean, he's been around forever. Oh, yeah, he was He was definitely there in the Attitude Era. He was, I think he went there in 97, if I'm, 96 or 97, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't know if he was in developmental before that. Yeah. Yeah, um, he might have been. Um, he might have been. I, I know he went. I know he did the Olympics, and they sponsored him in the Olympics. I remember watching it. I remember it was a big deal um, at the time. And then he just he he just wound up there right after, right, like like shortly after the Olympics. Right, right. And his uh, his first thing was with that thing with Jerry Lawler. Right. So, um, but yeah, yeah. I, I like I said, I know Mark's been talking about retiring for a long time now. Is uh, he well cra- over a year? He's beat up his body. You know, that's a big guy. So his body, that's a lot of weight. So that's a, that's a lot of pressure on the guy's body. So I'm sure, you know, and if you remember, he got injured. That's why he lost the belt, right? Because he got injured? I think so. Belt. I think so. What's, what's really crazy, if you really think about it, um, I mean, it's quite a story, honestly, is that he's been there for so long, 
and that they counted him out so many times because, you know, he just got stale. He was just one of the faces in the crowd. And he's really reinvented himself the last, like, two, three years. And now he's having this. He's going to have this program with John Cena. And it's taken him, I don't know, he's been there since 1999 or whatever, 2000. It's taken him all this time to get a program with John Cena for the WWE Championship. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, hope they, I hope he gets it, which will be record-breaking for him because he'll be the first black WWE champion. Well, The Rock. You got The Rock is the first black WWE champion. Yeah, but like, like Booker T, the, the quote Booker T, man, he's not a man dingo. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, who, you know, I think uh, Mark Henry definitely deserves it. You can't knock the guy. He works hard. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, is he a Daniel Bryan? No, he's not. But he does what he does well. And uh, I like Mark Henry. I'll tell you a funny Mark Henry story real quick. My first time I was booked at WWE, I think it was uh, 2003. I was a little scrawny thing. You remember me back then. I was, I was probably Yeah, you're a little guy. Yeah, soaking wet. And I get to Lafayette, Louisiana. And uh, I'm walking around. I'm nervous as hell because, you know, you hear all these stories about WWE and these guys working, walking on eggshells and don't say the wrong thing. Don't look at this guy. Make sure you're nice to everybody. So, you know, I'm kind of new in the business at the time. I'm only a couple of years under my belt. I'm sweating bullets. Yeah. And, uh... One of the guys comes up to me, man, I wish I can remember who came up to me. Uh, it was one of the agents at the time, though, and he goes, you know, he's like, oh, you're here to work tonight, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, uh, you're working Mark Henry. And Mark Henry sits right there, and he looks at me, and he just starts rubbing his hands again, and he goes, bring on the white meat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, dude, I was scared out of my mind. I was like, this guy is going to kill me. So, uh, you know, I was a little bitty thing, and Mark was huge. Yeah. He was probably one of the hugest guys I had seen at the time because he's a legit, a monster. Yeah. So, uh, so and, 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 you know, I, I really didn't wrestle him. They were just messing with me that night. So uh, that's how I began talking to Mark Henry. But, it, yeah, I can tell you, he scared the hell out of me. And I'm not intimidated by many people, but, but that was one guy that intimidated me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a great story. That's a great story. Um, so, so what do you think? You know, do you think that, that – there's any chance he winds up going over on Cena as kind of like a surprise uh, result, or do you think that that's just not going to happen? Man, I, I don't know. I can say it's not going to happen because there's never been a black WWE champion. <laughs> and, dude, I, and I believe that. You know, I believe in that stereotype. But I, I don't know if Vince don't want it or – or, or what the deal is with that. But I mean, it can't no- be coincidence at this point. I mean, they've, they've had a, a WWE champion since the 60s. You know, they've had one, you know, and, and it is what it is. But, you know, I mean, they're, they're, it can't be coincidence. And every time a black man has won a, a heavyweight championship, it has been the world title. Yeah. You know, the old WCW belt. It's never been the WWE championship. So yeah. I, that has to come into play. That's why I, I would I'd like to see Mark get that and be the first guy and you know and break that record. Yeah, yeah. I remember when it was a big deal um, when Ron Simmons beat uh, Vader and uh, won. The, I think I think he beat Vader um, and won. Yeah. And won it, was, the it, it was huge. Yeah, it was. That's that's what blew Bill Watts's bookings out of the water. That's what you know got it so talked about. They had the first black heavyweight champion. Yeah, and it's funny too because with Watts, he was always a real proponent of, of pushing, uh, pushing you know, black wrestlers as, as top baby faces. I mean, he uh, wound up with get, having so much success with Junkyard Dog as an example, um, you know, down there that he was always looking for that that black baby face. And sometimes it worked, and sometimes it didn't. But you know, I mean, he's one of those guys that that always gave him a shot. Right, right, right. And and Ron's a prime example. I Man, Ron's an awesome guy. I think uh, Ron is probably one of my favorite people to ever, you know, veterans to ever be around and travel with and uh, spend some time with on the road because the guy has so much knowledge. I'll tell you a funny, funny Ron Simmons story now that we're on it. Uh, I spent a lot of time with Ron, um, and I got a few Ron Simmons stories, but one was uh, Tommy. I was with Tommy Dreamer, and we were talking about Ron Simmons. I, I don't remember why, but uh, he said they were, you know, this is recently, probably within the last – Three or four years, I, I'm, I'm sure. But Dreamer's saying they were all out drinking all night at a bar. So Ron Simmons is, you know, BSing, joking around like he usually is. He's kind of loud. He's goofy. He likes to have fun. And he's bragging about how he can bench press 500 pounds. Yeah. So they're going, there's no way in hell, you know, you're too old, maybe back in the day, blah, blah, blah. They said they left the bar right then and there in the middle of the night, went to a 24-hour gym. No warm-up, no nothing, drunk as hell. Ron, Ron Simmons puts 500 on the, on the bar. 
hits it once, like it ain't nothing, and just shrugs his shoulders and like, yeah, wow. yeah, mother, you know, wow. checks it out, just walks the hell off. <laughs> wow. I, I, I mean, there are just some people, man. You meet in this business that, that business that just have such freakish strength. I mean, you can be, you know, I get jealous half the time. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. But uh, you know, Ron Simmons, he was a, he was a bad dude, bro. Yeah, Ron Simmons was one of those dudes. You probably didn't want to play with because he, he, like you said, he was freakishly strong. Yeah. Oh no, he's a real. He was a real deal back in the day for for sure. Um, let me uh, ask you this. Um, you know, CM Punk and Brock Lesnar, they uh, did a big angle on Monday night. Uh, Punk turned Her. baby face. It looks like they're gonna do uh, the match with Brock uh, either at SummerSlam or Money in the Bank. What are your thoughts on Punk as a baby face? I like it. I like it because I think uh, I, I think he'll he'll definitely draw more. I, I believe so. I think when Punk's a baby face, they do a lot more with him. And uh, I, I think he'll sell a lot more merchandise, which means more more money for the company, of course, which they love. Sure. So, uh, and, and, you know, is he viable as a heel? Yeah, but I, I don't think he needs to be a heel. I think Punk is more successful as a baby face than he is as a heel. I might be wrong, but I mean, what, what, what do you think about it? You know, it's one of those things where I think that it was a li- it's a little too soon. I think there's a lot of potential there in, in Punk the Baby Face. I mean, we've already seen it, but I think it's too soon. I mean, he hasn't even been a heel for a year. I mean, it's, it's, it's been under a year since he, he's been a full-fledged heel, and I think there was still a lot of uh, – I think there was still a lot of gas in that tank. I think he was an awesome heel. I think him and Paul were, were a great combination together. And I think, I think that they probably should have kept them together one more year, and then maybe did this, maybe do this turn after WrestleMania. Because now, why? Why do you think they pulled him, Paul? Um, you know, from what I understood, they are trying to they're trying to balance the baby faces on the house shows, and the problem is they don't have another baby face other than Randy Orton that's even close to John Cena. So when they split the house shows, they put Orton on the one house show, they put Cena on the other house show, the SmackDown on the Raw house show, and the SmackDown house show house show bleh, I can't even talk today house shows aren't doing well at all. So now by splitting, now by having well, a second strong they baby never face. Do. What's that? They never, they never do. Yeah, I mean, but that's why that that was the um, catalyst behind this is that they wanted a second strong baby face. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess we'll see. I, I don't. I like I said, like I said earlier, who knows? I mean, they're, they're the bookers. Who knows? You know, we, we can we can speculate all we want, but who really knows? Uh, I, I mean, is it good? I, I think yeah. I think it's good for Punk. I think uh, you know, Bravo. He can be the face of the company again, hopefully. Uh, or they can build a guy up like Daniel Bryan and put him as the face of the company. But I think they definitely need, you know, someone other than John Cena to play that role. Yeah, yeah, for for sure, for sure. Um, okay, uh, you know, let's um, take a quick time out here. Um, we've been going now for almost 40 minutes. And uh, throw some plugs in here. Um, you know, Wildcat Sports, I know you got a lot going on with Wildcat Sports, and I wanted to ask you about your upcoming match with Matt Hardy, so I think now's a good time to talk about it. I know you're, you're, you're uh, pumping it pretty heavy on uh, Facebook and in social media. I'm, I'm excited about it, that you got Matt Hardy um, on your show in your hometown. Uh, talk a little bit about what's going on with Wildcat. It's hot, man. Uh, Wildcat's really blowing up. We're just doing better and better. Um, the, the tickets just went on sale, actually, for that show, and uh, well, floor is pretty much sold out. We got about 20 tickets remaining still for the floor uh, for the Matt Hardy show, and and that's what you know. Without any advertising, man, we're blessed. This was just from you know our our crowds that constantly come to our show, and you know we also sold a lot of general admission tickets. So I, I think we're going to expect well over a thousand people at this next show, and it's not till August 24th. Yeah. So we got plenty of time to build it up. I haven't put out any posters. I just got the posters today. I'm not going to uh, put them out on the town for you know probably at least another three three weeks at least you know because I, I don't like them to sit out there too long and i think they get stale and people forget or you know they'll get turned down and, sure. uh but yeah it's it's a big deal to have matt come in even though he's a scumbag <laughs> uh, so even though i'm gonna kick his teeth down his throat and I, I i'm interested to see how my crowd's gonna react because you know every place we go you know matt's that half and half half the crowd loves him half the crowd hates him the ecw crowd wanted to see him die when I went to, uh, you know, when I fought him in our first match in Monroe, you know, same thing. He, he was over, but, you know, a lot of people there wanted to see him get his ass kicked. So, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see because, you know, the fans here, a lot of them love him. But then again, I'm the hometown guy. 
So a lot of them pay to see me, and they come to see me. I, I draw good numbers here. So I, I'm, I'm, it's, I don't know if it's going to be a split crowd, if it's going to be one-sided or – you know what? It's going to be an interesting take on this event, and I really, I'm happy to have Bestia back. Also, I mean, we're going to have Bestia back on the card from Mexico, so uh, it, it's nice to have guys like that and have a little variety on our show and, and give this crowd something different that they don't always see, and not just you know the usual guys that we we have come in. I like to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Who is? Let me ask you this: of of everybody you got in Wildcat right now, let's take yourself out of the equation because I know how great you are. But who is the up-and-comer there that if there's one guy you want to tell the listeners out here to keep your eye on, uh, eyes on, eye if you only have one eye, who is it? There's two of them, actually. There's uh, Matt, Law- Matt Lancey and Buku Dow, those guys. And, and Blake Wilder, too, man. Blake Wilder's been doing well, but the only problem with Blake, he seems to be injury-prone. He was one of our uh, top students of the first class. He came in and uh, immediately almost tore his shoulder out. Not almost. He did tear his shoulder. I had shoulder surgery. Was out six months. Uh, just came back. He's been back for a few months now. And now our last show, which was a few weeks ago, he tore his MCL on his knee. Wow. So, so you know, if Blake could stay healthy, Blake's very over with the crowd. Buku Dow's over with the crowd. And Matt Lancey's just one of those guys who's who's an animal, which all uh, some of the Philly fans are, are familiar with these guys because they got to see him perform at the uh, Extreme Rising show when they did a tag match. Mm. Mm. So uh, it, you just check these guys out, man. It, it, if you can, look it up. Look them up on YouTube. Watch the, watch the Wildcat show on YouTube and, and, and check out some of our product because we definitely have some guys that you might not heard of but you will love. It, it's definitely a, a different atmosphere and a different vibe than the, the usual guys you see from the Philly crowds or the L.A. crowds or the you know those East Coast uh, spot fest crowds, I would like to say. you know th- These guys are different, and they have a lot more to bring to the table than just you know spot, spot, spot. Um, I think one of the main things we have down here is we have that old school psychology, yeah. which really draws the fans into it. They're just not here to see cool moves. They want to know, you know, they like the feuds that are going on. They like the the, uh, the matches because the matches just tell more story other than, you know, a big move, a big move, a big move. Yeah. So, you know, you're, I know you're, you, I know you got Matt Hardy coming down there. Um, you and Stevie Richards were having a hell of a series uh, before Extreme Rising went down. Any chance of uh, Stevie coming back down there for a rematch? Yeah, Stevie actually came down for one of our shows, uh, too. He came down a few months ago, and we wanted to get Stevie back on last show, but he was already booked. Uh, anytime to have Stevie around is awesome because Stevie has so much knowledge. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, like this is one thing a lot of people don't know about Stevie Richards. Stevie Richards drew some of the highest ratings in WWE history. Yeah. When he, when he was in Right to Censor, and they did that whole Right to Censor thing, they were drawing the highest ratings of those, you know, in, in, in those uh, those segments. Sure. Had the highest rated segments in, in like, Raw history, I believe. Mm. So, you know, that, that's kudos to Stevie Richards. You got to give credit where credit's due again. Oh, for sure. People, you know, tuned in. Yeah. So oh, sure. I don't think Stevie gets enough credit that, that he deserves because the guy is talented. The guy has worked everywhere, and we've talked about this several times. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you've talked about how long you've known Stevie for, and you know the incidents like when when Stevie came back to ECW, a lot of guys thought he had a big head, and you know Stevie Stevie can be misread, and I'm not saying he didn't. I you know I I, I wasn't friends with Stevie back then, but I'm I'm just saying the guy's been around. He's wrestled for every major company that is, held jobs for extended amounts of time there. So to have a guy like that come into our locker room and sit down with our guys, God, man, it's it's a blessing because our guys pick up so much off that. Where you get a lot of guys who just come in and they want to take the money and run. Yeah. Where guys like Stevie Richards, and again, guys like Al Snow. Al Snow always, you know, Al Snow goes on a show. He always sits there. He watches the show. He criticizes the matches. He pulls the guys aside and says, "Hey, you should do this," you know. And and like Stevie's one of those guys who does the same thing. Yeah. So I'd much rather have guys like that than guys who just want to come in and get a book and roll out. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been told that you're slacking a little bit because you didn't mention your website. Oh, yeah, our website. <laughs> Check us out, wildcatsports.com. We, uh, we got a great guy who took over uh, who's been promoting it, and, and it just, just happened yesterday. I'm gonna, I ain't going to drop his name because, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I should or not. I don't know if it's – uh, if if it's the right thing to do, because people might say I'm a little biased, but the guy who took over our website is doing a great job, and it's going to blow up a lot more. We we actually slacked on the website itself for a long time. I'm not one of those internet savvy guys, so I'm not one of those guys who gets on every day and updates everything. So the guy who took over the site 
is woke, though, and, and I think our site will expand tremendously in the next month or so. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, for those of you listening out there, it's wild, It's Wildcat with a K. It's Wildcat yeah, Sports. Yeah, yeah, Wildcat. Though. Just saying, same thing uh, with Twitter. You know, it's Wildcat Sports, Wildcat with a K. And uh, speaking of Wildcat, the, the one good thing about Wildcats around here, I don't know if you heard the story. There's this major story going on across the U.S. that a 13-year-old boy killed a 5-year-old yes. girl using WWE-style moves. Yes. Well, the media has had a frenzy with this thing. Uh, I just went to Fox News today, did another interview who, with Fox News, who I've actually done a few interviews with, you know, in the past. So once this happened, they contacted me and said, hey, we want to have you come in and, you know, speak on the subject and what can we do to, um, you know, protect our children from this situation. And so it's a blessing to be able to go out there and be that guy to where, hey, when something goes on with wrestling in the Louisiana area, they say we call Luke Hawks, we call Wildcat Sports. Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Um I, I'll just uh, throw a, quick, a couple quick plugs out there, and then I have a question to ask you, picking up from our last radio show. Somebody asked me uh, to ask you this uh, in the chat room. So a um, couple quick things. Um, one, I promised my friends over at the Fans Podcast that I would give them a plug. They've been really kind in plugging my tweets and plugging the radio show lately. So uh, follow them on Twitter, at the Fans Podcast, and uh, they do their own podcast. Really great stuff. And that's at thefanspodcast.podomatic.com and uh, wrestle-talk.com. Those are, are really good guys. And uh, I'll give a plug. You know, I'm in a generous mood today, uh, Luke. So I'll give a, a plug to my good friend, uh, Brett, Clan, Brett Clan Daniel, who uh, just received, I think it was his two millionth visitor on wrestlechat.net. So uh, congratulations to those guys. Uh, hardworking fellas over there and uh, really great. Uh, news site. Um, I'll uh, yeah. I'll self very sport of a wildcat. Those guys. I mean, I think they're the best news site out there. Yeah, uh, they cover a lot of subjects. I don't think they're uh, one sided. You know, I think they they go after everything. And you know, like I said, they, they're one of the websites. They're the main website that really picks up on wildcat and covers it. So, you know, major props to WrestleChat.net. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, big, big, big props to those guys. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw a couple of selfish plugs in there. Uh, CamelClutchBlog.com dot com uh, for all the latest wrestling blogs and uh, MMA blogs, uh, wrestling results, pay per view predictions. I have uh, a real, uh, real great staff of writers now uh, writing for the Camel Clutch Blog, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can download the apps. The, uh, the Camel Clutch Blog app is in the Android Store and in the iTunes Store, and on the app you can actually listen to these pro wrestling radio shows. There's a, a podcast cast tab on there and you can have that right on your phone uh so it's very cool uh it's been downloaded a lot and if you do download it uh do me a favor and give me a review it really helps a lot same thing with itunes if you missed any of today's uh pro wrestling radio you can download it in a couple of different places one is on itunes and i know there are a lot of people that subscribe so because that because i see the numbers um but it would really help if you can give us some reviews out there uh you can also catch it on pro wrestling i try and update the website with one or two podcasts a week usually a class classic podcast and then uh the new one with luke and i whenever that goes up online as well and of course uh my twitter handle at camel clutch blog all right luke you uh up. what's that so you're blowing up i'm trying i'm trying listen pretty soon you're gonna forget about us small folks never never I, i've known you now for how many years i haven't forgot about uh, you a, a lot but, but and i love it let's let's make it a lot more you got that right listen um, you uh, left the radio show last time about two weeks ago, and you left us with this big tease about a 900 number story. And uh, <laughs> I you know, forgot about that. Yes, and one of the listeners in the chat room actually just reminded me. He came to the chat room. He said, "Did I miss Luke telling the 900 number story?" And I said, "No, not yet." So, Luke, you, you teased us uh, two weeks ago with it. What's the deal with the 900 number? Okay, it's it's not a long story, but it's it's a pretty funny one. So, remember in the early 90s. Hulk Hogan had a WWE 900 number. Yes. Uh, I don't remember what it was. It was like the Hulkamania hotline or whatever. Yes. So, of course, I was kind of a hoodlum kid, and I didn't live in the best neighborhood. But in the neighborhood, they had one house where this one guy had money, and he had a phone on his porch. So every day, even though the number was a recording and said the same thing, I would go on this guy's porch, <laughs> use his phone, <laughs> and repeatedly call this one nine hundred Hulkamania number. <laughs> and 
charged the hell out of this guy's phone bill until one day he got smart enough and took his phone off the porch. And, I mean, he had to figure out that's where it was coming from. That's awesome. Well, I, I got a pretty good story like that, too. And I'm afraid to even say it because it, it might ruin uh, my, my image a little bit. But just remember, I was about 17 years old. So we're talking uh, 23 years ago. So I wasn't as nice of a guy 23 years ago as I am today. So, yeah, I was probably about 10 when I did that. Yeah. So, I, well, at least you had an excuse. You were 10. I was just just a, a jerk 17 year old kid so i was hooking up with this girl okay and uh what? so i was probably what what's that i said what what you? so uh so actually i was probably a little older because i was out of high school so let's say i was i was 19 so i was hooking up with this girl and i would go to her house and uh we, we would hook up and her parents were never home and uh she would like go in the other room and she had i don't know if you remember those music choice music video channels where you could like <laughs> request <laughs> of course. You can request your, your video, but it cost you like like a dollar like every time you request a, a video. So I would call up and request all these heavy metal videos whenever she would leave the room. <laughs> and uh, you know, and of course the parents got the phone bill, weren't too happy about it. But uh yeah, that was my, my similar experience with the nine hundred number. It's funny, man. It's, it's <laughs> the things kids do. Yeah. I, I think it's hilarious though. Sometimes I'll just sit back and I'll like something like that will pop in my head and I'll just laugh and laugh and laugh to myself because I'm thinking God, this guy probably had, had a five or six hundred dollar phone bill, you know? <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, let, uh, you know, we have, uh, what do we got? Ten minutes left. Let's go back to the wrestling talk here. Um, you know, you and I, we talked uh, two weeks ago, and at that time, TNA had just announced that they signed Rampage Jackson. You liked it. I really wasn't so hot on it. And since that time, they've had him on TV two weeks in a row. He had the one week where he and Kurt Angle had like a stare down, like a stare off, and, and they went off the air. Then the next week, he came out and he rescued Kurt from uh, Aces and E. And I think that they, they hugged or shook hands or something like that. And I'm just blown away that they had this angle two weeks ago where they had this real intense stare down. And then the next week, they're helping each other out. Um, I mean, I don't know, Luke. I think at this point, um, Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff, I mean, they are smart guys. Like them or not, they're, 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 they are smart guys. But I don't think they have a clue when it comes to booking MMA uh, fighters in, in pro wrestling. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would agree. I didn't see it, but uh, from what you tell me, I, I never watched TNA, by the way. I mean, shoot me now. Like, I'm guilty. <laughs> I never watched TNA. But uh, so most of the time, I forget it's on. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's one of the things where... I think the people that watch TNA would probably rather shoot themselves. <laughs> it, it's one of those things that, where, where you, I mean, it could be a trick. What if, uh, you know, what, what, if, what if Rampage is in Aces and Eights? What if he goes to Aces <laughs> and Eights? What if he helped them this week? But, you know, it's kind of just playing mind games. I guess, I guess it's too early to tell. We... I don't even really think we should, you know, kind of discuss. I guess we got to see where it, where it, you know, plays out and, and goes to. You be very you be very politically correct lately with uh, TNA. Are you going to be wind up? Uh, you going to wind up doing one of these gut checks uh, in the next couple of weeks? I don't think I'll be doing a gut check, <laughs> but uh, you know, let's. I, I like TNA. Let's say TNA is the number one wrestling company out there. You said you don't even watch them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm happy they're around. You know, I don't watch TNA, but I, you know, I'm definitely happy they're around. Even if the product is, you know, if I if I don't like some of the things they do, I'm, you know, it's 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 employing some people, and uh, when they do pay people, they they're paying guys. So it's it's you know a chance for my friends and some other guys in wrestling to get a job. So yeah, you know, and get get paychecks from wrestling, and, and you know, you got to applaud that. Hey, I'd, I'd rather TNA be around and you know have bad storylines or have bad booking than you know them not be around and. You know, there'll be more guys in the indie scene. So yeah, yeah, no, that, that that that's true. That's true. That's absolutely true. So, um, speaking of TNA, uh, Sting has been doing a lot of interviews, and uh, he's out there promoting this movie that he's doing. Did you do this movie with him? I know you do a lot of movies. Of no, movie. no, I, I don't even know what movie Sting did. I just, I've never been a Sting fan. So I just, uh, I just, I wish, I wish Sting would disappear off the face of the earth. And don't the, the only thing I'd really like to see Sting do, and I think we talked about this before, is you know, WrestleMania, Undertaker. That's I think that's you know a, a good major draw, and you know that's something I would be interested in seeing Sting do. Otherwise, than that I just I wish Sting would never appear in wrestling again. Well, you know that brings me to my point, and in a couple of these interviews, Sting has flat out said that he would love to wrestle the Undertaker, 
and he would love to do it at WrestleMania, which is kind of weird because you usually don't hear a guy saying that that's under contract with another company. And um, Stink signs, I don't know um, how many people out there are aware of this, but Stink's contracts with TNA are year to year. He's one of the few guys that goes year to year with them, um, which is why a lot of rumors pop up right around WrestleMania time with Sting because, you know, if you haven't seen him on TV in like February or March, at that point people are thinking he hasn't resigned, he's signed with WWE. But the fact that he's out there talking about this, it's, it's really interesting. And, and, and you just said it. You said you'd like to see it happen. Um, I'm kind of on the opposite side of the fence there, Luke, where – you know, I wanted to see it happen several years ago, but I think that Undertaker has really, really upped the game at WrestleMania the last couple of years. I mean, he's had this phenomenal run of fantastic matches the last um, five WrestleManias where he set the bar so high, and I've watched Sting at TNA, and he's had some good matches, and for a guy his age, I think it's remarkable. I'm mar- remarkable. I think he does really well, but I don't think there's any way that he could go in there at his age and A, live up to the hype, and, and B, get a match out of The Undertaker that, that's anything close to anything Taker's had like the last five years. Right, and, and I, I don't know. Because, uh, like, literally, if things on TV, I wouldn't bat an eye at it. So, yeah. you know, I couldn't, again, I couldn't tell you. Like I say, I don't watch TNA. Dude, it, if Sting's on TNA, I'm definitely not watching TNA. Mm. Like, I'm turning it off. Mm. It's, that's just how much I dislike Sting. I've never been a Sting fan. I didn't like him when he was in WCW. I didn't like him when he was the hot baby face with the blonde hair. Uh, you know, I, I just Sting has never been a draw to Luke Hawks. You know, and, I met um, I, I met Sting when I was a teenager and asked to take a picture with him, but he wouldn't take one because he said he was hungover. Really? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, that's kind of cool, Sting. Maybe I'll give him a chance. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, he just made me a Sting fan instantly. There you go. So, you know, wrapping up the show here, we have a few minutes left. I put up a blog today over at CamelClutchBlog.com talking about the 10 biggest upsets in WWE history. And I'm not just talking about championship matches. I'm talking about big upsets. What what do you remember? I mean, either as a fan or you know, just you know yourself in the business. Maybe you're on a WWE show. Is there any match that you remember where where the result just completely surprised you? Of course, I think the number one match of all time with the with the upset uh, would have to be one two three kid and, and Razor Ramon. I mean, that's the when you said that, that's the first thing that jumped in my head. I know it's the probably the most commercial one, but I. I it's one of those ones where I think, man, that was major. It was it was big for for uh, for Pac's career, you know. Yeah, uh, that's what really got him that big push and got people believing him. And as a matter of fact, it's funny you mentioned that because last night I I watched an old match on YouTube that Pac had tweeted. It was him versus um, uh, Jerry Lynn, Bret Hart. No, 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 no. It was WWE. Oh, uh, Jeff Jarrett. Mike. No, Mike. Uh, Iron Mike Sharp. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and I enjoyed it. And I'm watching, I'm watching one, two, three, kid as you know versus versus Iron Mike Sharp. And I was like, man, it, it was a quick match, but he was so different at that time. You yeah. know, like it was it was a different character and style than anybody else was doing in WWE. Yeah. So you know, it, it was it was a nice change of pace. It's great too when you look at that, and you know, and that that was absolutely on the list. You know. In wrestling, they've tried to do this, um, you know, many times over the years where they try and take this upset and they make a new star, but it never really works, you know, for whatever reason. I guess they just never really commit to it. Like, look at Shelton Benjamin when he pinned Triple H. Um, you know, that was supposed to make him a new star, but then the next week you had Evolution beating him down and then Triple H beats him two, three weeks in a row and he doesn't get over. And I think, you know, One Two Three Kid was really the, the best success story out of any of those guys that you took a guy that was that was being portrayed as a jobber and had him get, get, get an upset and you, and you stuck with him and he became a star out of it. I think it's, it's interesting because he's really the one guy that that made it work, made the angle work. Yeah, I, and I, I don't uh, I don't remember the Shelton thing. Yeah. I, oh, you don't that, remember that? No, not at all. No. no. As, uh. as a kid, um, you know, this wasn't on my list, but I did a, a title list um, a couple a couple months a couple weeks ago. As a kid, my 
biggest shock, uh, biggest upset that I watched as a kid was Iron Sheik beating Bob Backlund for the title. I mean, that was just crazy. Oh, it. it was just, it, I, I never saw it come in. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't in newsletters or anything back then, but you kind of had a feel for guys that were strong and guys that were coming up and, and guys that were getting big, big pushes. And Sheik wasn't even really getting that huge of a push at the time. I mean, he was a singles guy, but he hadn't had any big wins. Usually the, the, the heels would get a big win over a baby face and then they would wrestle the champ. But Sheik just kind of like went right to the champ, which kind of didn't make any sense. And of course, he wound up being a transition guy to Hogan. But I didn't know that at the time as I'm watching. I'm a kid. But that one was really the one that surprised me as a kid. I got to tell you, um, you know, you're showing the age because I, I know it now because I watched it. And it's been, of course, brain, you know, driven through our heads all those years. But that was before my time. Sure. So. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I kind of had a feeling you'd go with the, the one, two, three kid because that's that's more your time when you were a kid and watching wrestling. Right. That's that was prime. You know, that was that was probably my prime wrestling time. Yeah. You know, those so, late 80s, early 90s was, you know, when it when it was probably the most influential to me. And, I, you know, I tried not to miss an episode back then. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, well, when I was a kid, anyway. So you know, we have um, about ninety seconds, two minutes left. Um, you know, why don't we wrap up? One of the one of the things I wanted to, to throw at you today. You know, we're doing the show, we're taping the show. Well, we're live now, but if you're listening to the show on tape, we're a couple of days after Father's Day. And uh, Luke, you have two boys, two beautiful boys, and I know you're 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 just you're an awesome dad because I see I see all the things and I, I know all the things you do with your your boys. Um, you know, just just kind of pro wrestling memories, either with your dad or or you as 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 their dad. I mean, with me, you know, it was my dad taking me to the matches to the Spectrum, you know, all the time when I was a kid, and bitching and moaning uh, during the last match, and he wanted to leave before uh, the before the uh, traffic rush uh, got out of there. <laughs> that, that, that was my dad, you know, and yeah. <laughs> but um, but no, I mean, but just him, you know, taking me to the to the shows and really just bitching about you know the parking and stuff. But I mean, you know, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been able to go to those shows. And and, and who knows, you know, where I, where I'd be today. Um, you know, for you, you know, I don't know. What, what kind of? I, I know you and and your oldest son. You you're you're doing a lot with him in wrestling. What are you know? It's, it's Father's Day. You as a dad. Your dad. You know, lay it on me. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't have any memories with my dad, so to say. My 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 real. You know, you know, I was adopted. All yes. that stuff. And you know, I know my real dad. You know, I, it's not like he's some lost guy. I don't know where he's at. But uh, we chat every now and then. Um, but my dad took me to my first pro wrestling experience i think i talked to you about this back in the day it was like right after mid-south kind of ended around here oh excuse me and there was this new company uh starting up i think it was the nwf at the time it was run by buck robley and uh that was my first experience where with pro wrestling where i got to be live and up close that's when i ran the, the locker room with paul horndorf which i told you about and uh it's when i met terry funk terry funk was the first wrestler i met and uh it, it was a great experience for me and now the, the thing with me is I knew, I always knew, especially back then, I was like 10 years old, I knew I wanted to be a pro wrestler. It's all I ever wanted in life. So to see my son want to be one and not really push it on him means a lot to me. And to get to spend this time with him and bring him to the shows with me. And he travels on the road with me. And he's just so genuinely interested in it. It's not something I pushed on him. It's not something I said, hey, you got to be a wrestler like your dad. It's not, you know, he looks up to me. I remember, you know, it's awesome when to see your kids in like first grade. And he's drawing pictures for his project of a wrestling ring and, you know, with, with the wrestlers and with his dad and, you know, what he wants to be. So it's, it's nice to have that, uh, I guess, second generation thing go on where I think he's going to follow my footsteps and I think he'll exceed me in pro wrestling. And no matter how, do, how good I do, he's going to do way more better than I would. Yeah. So, he's got a great know. look, that's for sure. Man, he's got a look. He can, he can talk the talk. Let's just hope, you know, and he's a kid still. So the one thing I always say is you can't teach heart. So I just hope he has the heart and the drive when he gets in and it actually, you know, starts going through the training and he's getting hurt and he's getting injured all the time. You know, well, not injured, but getting hurt all the time. Hopefully he doesn't really get injured. But, uh, you know, it's it's a rough business. That's why most guys quit as soon as they start. You know, they they say they had the passion for it, but then as soon as they start bumping or doing push-ups and sit-ups, they're out the door. And I hope my son has that heart and drive, and he loves it enough that, you know, he really takes it as far as he can go with it. Yeah, no, good stuff, good stuff. Well, 
Uh, that'll about do it for us uh, this week. We'll come back in about two weeks and uh, catch up with all the latest news. Luke, it was awesome. Really great show. Um, I hope uh, that dude with the 900 number uh, wasn't listening because, you know, with the millions you're worth, who knows what kind of lawsuit that he's going to file against you. And, uh, you know, I, um, I, I'm looking forward to uh, good things out of Wildcat Sports over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, me too. Me too. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I think we're going to really, you know, I think we'll be expanding soon. Yeah. So as long as we keep doing what we're doing, we're doing the right thing. I'm not trying to, you know, sp- spend money that we don't have. I'm not trying to uh, do these over overly excessive things to try and get the company out there. I'm just concentrating on having good shows with good matches and having a good product and letting the product speak for itself. And, you know, you never know. I, I don't think we'll ever be as big as WWE. I don't know how big we'll get, but, you know, I think we'll definitely grow larger than what we are now. Uh, you know, uh, Brett in the chat room wants you guys to expand to Philly. Yeah, tell Brett uh, to give me about $20,000. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. All right, brother. Uh, thanks again, and uh, we'll hear from you all uh, in about two weeks. And uh, if you missed any of today's radio show, you can catch it. Uh, on ProWrestlingRadio.com. Again, on iTunes. It's out there. Just type in Pro Wrestling Radio on iTunes or on the uh, Camel Clutch blog app uh, available in the Google Play Store and the iTunes Store.